And now investors have their interest fixed on the long-dated papers and it here bills market while the bond market is characterized by huge sell-offs, fueling the bearish buyers. Chuka Wachuku, head of fixed income trading at UBA, joins me now for more market updates. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Chuka. Thank you, David. Let's start off with the anticipation that we're going to likely see an upward trend in terms of the interbank money market rates. This is likely to be fueled this week by the Federal Government Series 5 Sukuk issuance. But starting off really now with today's opening volume and what has played out in the money market from Monday up until now, midweek. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, let me start with the money market. Um, system has actually been a bit liquid. Uh, we, has, we had a fact came in last week. And so we've seen um, rates uh, hovered around uh, between um, 14, uh, 13, 14 uh, percent to around uh, 15 percent. Uh, that is uh, in a significantly drop from um, what it was as um, some previous uh, weeks back, around uh, 16, 17 percent. Um, so uh, we still have um, a, a bit of respite on the system liquidity. Um, on the t bills market, uh, like you said, uh, t bills market. We've seen a lot of uh, interest on the longer end of the curve, um, especially the uh, new one year, which uh, was on auction uh, last last week, came out at uh, 14, um, 14.82%. And then uh, this was from around 14.48%, um, um, and this was around from uh, 13.99. Um, so we've seen this bill trade around um, 13 levels, uh, and that has actually um, brought in a lot of interest on that, um, on that market. Um, let me quickly run us through what has happened on the bond market. Uh, bond market, uh, just like the TBS market, has lately been quiet. However, we've seen uh, bearish sentiment. Um, two things: one, uh, to create liquidity, and secondly, uh, to to be able to um, generate uh, income. You know, traders selling down their assets to generate income for the month end, and that's uh, obviously what we are going to see to um, throughout the whole week. Yes, I'm talking about the fact that we are already at the last trading day for the month of November. Now, part of the expectations is that we are going to likely see a wane in demand in terms of the focus on long-dated papers. We've seen investor concentration really around the mid to long end of the curve. Now we are looking at longer-dated papers. But moving on, the anticipation is that we're going to see this drop likely. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, we will see a lot of the, um, interest on the long data and um, bills, like I said earlier. Um, you know, typical of uh, end of the year, you know, this is stock taking period. Yeah. Um, so you expect activity on the trading side to, you know, to reduce while uh, um, traders uh, strategize for, for the end of the year and then uh, the new year. So um, I don't expect to see anything um, significant happen. The only major um, activity we have uh, will be on the 14th of December, where there will be the last bond auction for the year. And so um, a lot of uh, concentration is on that. And considering the fact that this is the next, um, this is the first bond auction after the MPC uh, meeting, where uh, MPR was moved from 15% uh, to 16.5, and that's about um, 100 basis point movement. So we expect to see reaction, you know, in the next uh, bond auction. And what's making the 2049 and 2050 investors favorite at this point in time, talking about bond papers? Yeah, the yields are looking good. Um, you know, this bond was trading around the 9 to 8, 10% uh, some months back. And so it's around the uh, 14 half, almost uh, some trading around 15%. So it's quite attractive yield. And it's also a um, bond that uh, also attracts interest from the PFAs. And so most of the investors we are seeing on that Good, uh, on that bond, on those bonds, actually, a um, uh, majority of them are um, people from the PFAs, and that's where we have interest on those ones. And liquidity squeeze is really what's driving all of these yields. Absolutely. Okay, now, Chuka, in terms of the expectation for the rest of the month of December now, like we've also highlighted, this is the yield tide is here. The, the air is already changing in terms of whatever updates that we should also expect. Investor sentiments will definitely have the break coming shortly. Let's have your thoughts on the overall sentiment, what to expect for the month of uh, December, and the highlights will likely see shape up that. Well, uh, a, a month of December is, um, I call it a stock-taking month, uh, where um, traders review their activities for the past uh, 11 months, and then also uh, look at your book, 
and say um, if there are positions you are short on and you need to cover. And then uh, the major uh, activity, like I said earlier, is the bond auction. On the uh, for me, it's going to be a quite interesting auction because one of the uh, maturity will probably not be on offer, which is the 2037 um, bond. Um, which might probably may not be on the offer after this auction, and so it's quite a, a lucrative bond, and I'm sure that there will be a lot of interest on that bond as well. And the foreign exchange market, what's playing out between the I and E window, NAFEX, and also looking at the parallel market as well? Yeah, we've seen a, a little bit of a depreciation on the foreign exchange market, especially on the I and E sector um, section of the of the market. Uh, we've seen the uh, rate uh, today; it trades around. Um, it's tra currently trading around the uh, uh, 444.36, uh, uh, you know, and that's also, uh, sorry, 444.62, uh, that's um, about 12% uh, uh, depreciation from what it, 12% uh, basis, basis point depreciation from um, yesterday's um, trading rate of uh, 444.5. So uh, I think it will just remain like this uh, till the end of the week and possibly till the end of the year.